a lot of orals. I mean, once in a while I dabble in the beginning. I mean, I did my anadrols and my D balls. Jay Cutler's steroid cycle. He opens up about steroid cycle, guys. Okay, watch this. <laughs> So what's up guys, what's going on? Back again with me on my YouTube channel, Johan Sagala. So today we're gonna hurt and we're gonna listen guys, okay? Jay Cutler reveal his cycle in the Greg Doucet YouTube videos. Greg Doucet was interview Jay Cutler and Jay Cutler really pretty much well more about his cycle. He really, you know, remember what he's taking <laughs> back in the day, okay? So you get excited and you wanna know? Before we go jump up into it, please click the bell button, ring that bell, and let's watch Jay Cutler's steroid cycle. Steroid cycle of four times, Mr. Olympia. A lot of orals. I mean, once in a while, I dabble in the beginning. I mean, I did my anadrols and my D-balls um, mixed with testosterone. I used DECA. I wasn't a fan of DECA. Um, but I, as I prep for the shows, and Greg, my biggest challenge all year was getting the exotics, what I call the exotics, which is... Okay, you have to use these for show, but coming now and realizing a lot more than I realized back then, I don't know if I really needed to buy the Winstrels and the Anavars and the, I was using Parabolin, which I don't even know if you know what that is. Uh, I, I didn't really, there wasn't a lot of years that Trembolone was apparent for me. I mean, that's been the new thing, trend, I guess everyone uses. Um, uh, and then of course, you know, later on, I got into like the insulin stuff and, and that kind of additive, but I did that way later. Really interesting that Jay Cutler said he really talking with the exotics and back then he was really exotic. And he talking about, you know, Winstrol, Masteron and etc. etc. I think for the back then in the 50 or 20 years ago, it's really hard to find out, I think, because I think Jay Cutler competed at the early 2000 or maybe last 19s and early 2000. Winstrol and Masteron that he said it's really hard to find out because I think back then they just taking some kind of the combo like a test, Deca, and Adderall. Really easy to find out and that's really what they're taking because I think like Victor Martinez said he really taking a Deca for the most cycle, I think. And Jay Cutter and Victor Martinez, I think it's the same era back then. And you know, like his off season, he just taking, you know, Echo Poise and Testosterone. And I think for the back end guy, it's really pretty standard for taking Echo Poise and Testosterone back then. And for the commonly guy back then, they just really taking one and maybe over one or maybe one and a half grams for gear right well of course there's also a lot of the outliers who say they taking five grams for the example like nasser right nasser said he really took it five grams of gear back then and look at him he also died so i'm not saying in the 90s or in the old school era is not a lot and is not have outliers back then it's also have outliers like uh in this era but the truth is is like you know my max my max i mean of course the the gh would be added in you know when i would train for a contest um and listen the dosage i mean remember the first dosage was four i use a day i may have gone up to nine twelve uh on and off i mean i think nine was probably the best sitting area for me like that seemed to be just like around the testosterone you know this i've done a thousand a week of tests but 500 was my was my sweet spot, if that makes sense. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I toyed with insulin. I mean, I toyed with insulin from probably 2001 to, I absolutely stopped in 2004. I never used it again after that. In fact, I... His contest season, he's on higher doses GH, right? That he say. What I ever read and what I ever, you know, watch in the YouTube, I think GH 
Well, we don't need talking about right now, right? We don't need talking about nowadays, but back then, GH is really expensive, right? Because I think from the pharmaceutical 2005, GH is really expensive. And let's say you really need 20 units of GH, well, which is really unrealistic, like. But mostly people that I know is really need 20 units. I mean, like, for 20 units, 365 days in one year, you spending your money for 150 grand or 180 grand in one year. I mean, like, it's not really unrealistic unless you're millionaire, right? And you wanna spend your money for 150 grand in a year just for GH. I think mostly guy that I know that I heard is really, you know, need 8 to 10 units. Just really unrealistic and not make sense if you're spending your money for 150 grand in a year. And I think Jay Cutler said he really taking higher and I don't know how much higher that he take for his dosage, right? And so many people gonna say, oh, it's from his sponsor, it's from his this, this, and this. And what I think is, what's the sponsor that give him GH? I look decent. I want to know, I go by more how I feel. Um, back then, I was like all about, oh, am I full enough? And, you know, it's the one thing about the GH that, you know, I think is totally overrated. If you said to me, what's the most overrated thing I did? It was probably the, the, the GH because... It worked well like the first or second time I used it. I believe that it kept me fuller and I, they say it helps lean you down. I'm, I never, I hear these people say, oh, I can eat ice cream and tons of garbage on GH and I stay lean. That's bullshit. Like it doesn't work like that. You don't just shred body fat off. Yes, I agree. I mean, like it's not really makes sense. And I'm sure that if you're really taking GH, it's also same thing. Like you eat carbohydrate, right? Because you holding your water okay you holding some water from the gh and plus if you eat ice cream and if you eat you know some collect like the cookies it's not gonna you know dropping your body fat off because gh is not really you know burn your calorie gh is not drop your body fat i mean like it's not diuretics you guys it's gh your insulin it's gonna be you know on the gaining in the shit flesh i think for If you're really taking a higher amount of the GH, unless you're taking a normal, even if you're taking a normal, you don't need, you know, eat some kind of like the really bad food, like ice cream, cookie, the junk food out there, right? Um, and it's expensive, right? I mean, it's expensive. And, you know, I think, you know, I would use it several times a day. I, you know, I started just taking it once before I went to bed is the first time I used it. And it ended up being, like I mentioned, I was taking up to 12 a day. So, I mean, I would take, you know, increments of two IUs, you know, in between meals and whatever else. And I don't really kind of recap, like, listen, I would consider this, a, I would say, hey, I loaded up for the shows, right? I just mentioned all this stuff, like the G, which I didn't mess with the GH in the off season, whatever. But, um, y you know, I, I would load up. And I mentioned like the off season stuff when I would do that. I was saying like, this would be my, like, when I was 22, 23 whatever, before I got into heavy competition, you know, once I got into competing twice a year, I didn't really have an off, off season cycle. You know, this is when I had like the break, like even in, Oh, I turned pro in 96, I took 97 off. So I, I was saying on and off cycles, like that was more of those years. And then, you know, like I said, my off season would be leading up to, you know, my preparation 20 weeks down to 16, down to 12. Like I consider that kind of like my off season because You know, I was just training, like I said, drug, like I didn't take any drugs, even though this shit stayed in my body. I mean, I only came off for 12 weeks. But notice, guys, okay, he said 500 milligrams of test and 600 milligrams of EQ. It's Jay Cutler earlier or his career. I think he was in the late 90s, I think, in the 90s era or maybe in the 1960s. And I don't even know and I don't know what's the exactly he, you know, turning Pro, right on his earlier of his career i think yeah 1996 beforehand and he's gonna blast out for the 20 weeks out of the gear and he gonna you know taking off for the 40 weeks and he's gonna you know making again in the 12 weeks but remember guys when he was said he was off but he's still on <laughs> he's still on because he's still on the echo poise <laughs> notice guys okay don't judge and don't believe that jay Carter is really off he's still on echo poise that means he's gonna eliminate it to his system for i think for the three or four months i believe what i ever learned right but the point is he's still on 
And what I heard, he gonna increase, right? From the 500 milligrams of test and 600 milligrams of AQ. Maybe after 20 weeks that I listening few minutes ago, right? And I think after 20 weeks, he's gonna start again for his cycle. And yeah, maybe increasing a little bit. Maybe two or two and a half or maybe until three grams more than his dosage before. It was pretty much the basics where... I'll be honest, all the things I just said, minus the parabone, because it's almost impossible to get, like, this is what Joe Blow in the gym tells me he's taking right now. <laughs> so, you know, I think Jay Cutler was really give his run right now. <laughs> he just gave a little bit statement about Jim Bro, Jim Bro in some gym, who was really, you know, telling him what they already taking. But at the same time, he was on the Mr. Olympia competitors, right? <laughs> That's really funny, I mean. <laughs> so I wanted to show a little bit to all of you guys, okay? You can see this is DJ Carter when he was in the 16 years old, I think, and I believe. And he was in the 220 pounds. And he said this is his before taking a gear. He was totally off and really not totally taking anything. I mean, like, not really taking anything for the 220 pounds, a young guy right now. I mean, like, you can see the genetics really played a huge role in this in this moment, right? <laughs> if you're a guy and if you're a young guy, okay, and you already taking this, taking cycle, you can compare how well your genetics between Jay Carter genetics right now. This is Jay Carter when he said he not really taking in anything. I don't know this is real or not, right? I don't know it's true or not. I don't want to say it's not true, but you can see and you can compare your genetic J. Carter genetics and you're gonna see and you're gonna know you really have a great and awesome genetics or not. So that's a little bit that I want to telling and discuss to all of you guys, okay, about J. Cutler steroid cycle. So that's a J. Cutler cycle when he was preparing for Mr. Olympia, I think back then in the earlier his career, right? So what do you guys think, okay? Thank you so much for watching. If you love this video and content, I'm gonna bring more anything that we can talk and discuss in the whole topic of bodybuilding, work, and fitness. Click subscribe, share, like, and comment. Thank you guys. I'm your host, John Sagala, signing out. May God bless you all.